an example of good visual storytelling. There was a reason why I captured your attention better with that than if I shot the entire thing in one angle or in one take, which I'll show you in a second. The combination of a solid sound design, good story, and lots of angles is why that little film looks so professional. If I shot the entire thing in one take or in one angle, then it wouldn't have looked as interesting and you wouldn't have felt like you were actually there. However, because I cut to lots of different angles, you really felt immersed in the film. If you look at any movie out there, they're always cutting between different angles that make sense to the story. If you were watching a really dramatic film and all of the shots are super up close angles, and you were feeling the emotions of that scene because of the close angles, it wouldn't make sense to cut to a super wide shot all the way back here. It would really take you out of the scene. Kind of like this. You got the device? Yeah, I do. What if you got followed? Me? Follow, don't fool yourself. All right, fine. I just noticed you seem a little on the fence about this whole situation. Oh, please. I've done this hundreds of times. I'm the only scared one. Is you. See what I'm talking about? I used close camera angles the entire time to make the audience really feel like they were in this scene, but by cutting away to the wide shot, it didn't fit the vibe of this scene and it didn't make any sense. Obviously, there is a right time and place for anything and you can add any shot anywhere as long as you can make it make sense. However, by cutting away in the wide shot in the middle of that intense scene, it didn't make sense. So that's why it wouldn't look right. That's why a lot of times when you're filming something, you should have an idea of what you want the final product to look like in your head that you can focus on. That way, if you get lost while you're filming, you can think back to exactly what you're looking for and then you can try to film that. If you're playing a scene in your mind that you want to film and it doesn't look right or doesn't feel right, you should probably sit back and think about why it doesn't feel right. Because more than likely that's your filmmaking brain telling you something's not right here and it's not going to look right when you edit it. Sometimes you'll be able to fix something in the edit, however it's never a good idea to film something planning on fixing it in the edit. You always want to make sure to get it right while you're filming it. That way you know you have something solid to edit on instead of working everything from the grounds of while editing. Going back to that opening film, you already saw what it looks like going for close-up shots, wide shots, medium shots. Using all these different types of shots in the film is what made it so intriguing. And if I had shot the entire thing in just one camera angle, it wouldn't have looked the same. Here is the exact same film I showed you before, however, it filmed in one camera angle, and see how differently you feel about it. Okay, so by now you can hopefully see what I'm talking about. Using different camera angles can make your audience feel as if they're really in the scene if you do it correctly. However, if done incorrectly, it can take them out of the scene and make them realize that they're watching a movie instead of feeling immersed like they're in the movie, which is I think what filmmaking is all about. But what are good camera angles to use in your films and what do they mean? First, I'm going to go through the most commonly used camera angles and when it's best to use them, starting off with the wide, medium, and long shots. The wide shot is often used as an establishing shot to show in the beginning of a film where you are. It gives more information about where you are because you can see more around you, so that's why it's good to be used as an establishing shot. However, it can be used wherever you want to in a film. It doesn't have to be in the beginning, obviously. The long shot is closer than the wide shot, but further away than the medium shot. It still gives you information without getting in too close. It usually shows the whole body. Medium shots are usually used when you want to focus on what your subject is doing from the waist up. Tight or close-up shots are for extreme detail, like maybe somebody's eyeball or somebody tapping on a keyboard. It's for much more detailed shots. Next up are low angle and high angle shots. Low angle can be used to make your subject appear more powerful or in control, and a high angle shot will make your subject appear more inferior or scared. The Dutch tilt is used to make your audience feel uneasy or nervous. It looks 
off. Good filmmakers can find ways to use this in their films. If your subject is feeling off, slowly tilting to a Dutch tilt can make your audience feel that emotion that they should be feeling. It will make them feel off with the character. Last up is the over-the-shoulder shot. This shot can be used when two people are interacting or having a conversation. You can cut between an over-the-shoulder shot, a medium shot, a long shot, and maybe even a wide shot to film a whole conversation. These aren't all the camera angles out there. That would take a video in and of itself. However, these are my favorite angles that I use and the most common ones that you can use in your videos. And by using these angles, if you're not already, it can absolutely up the quality of your videos. Whether it's a short film, one of these videos, or whatever. You can use these in any way. If you like this style of video, then let me know by subscribing and commenting something creative. And let me know if there are any other videos I can help you guys out with, because I love making these videos for you, especially if you enjoy them as much as I do. With all that out of the way, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I will see you later. Bye.